It was a strong handover that we got from Wall Street and that is something which is reflected in the Asian markets as well. The market here, uh, I would say, will see a bit of a make or break week uh, going forward. Fundamentally, aluminium prices have been strong and also the Chinese data that we got over the weekend, the PMI data, well, it was relatively better in comparison to what the expectations was. They prefer Union Bank, Canada Bank, as well as Bank of India, uh, as they see better risk reward in smaller PSU banks on higher uh, earnings growth. Market breadth is quite, uh, is, is opening in a pretty, very, very positive way. Ten is to one in favor of advances. I think uh, there's no reason to be circumspect. At this point in time, India gold reserves stand at 817 tons. CARE has upgraded the rating to double A plus from uh, double A. And it's a new fiscal and what a solid start to the year has been. RBI in fact has been one of the earliest to recognize the non-transient nature of inflation. The Nifty is off around 60 points from the highs, but uh, still it is uh, steady at around uh, those uh, 22,467 levels. Well, that's the day so far and it's been a fantastic uh, start to the new financial year. What else can we say? Because the market made a new all-time high early in the morning. From then, of course, things have been a little sideways. Uh, you're with us here on Closing Bell. We're coming to you from the CV CNBC TV 18 Mozilla Rose Falls Studios. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleagues Reema and Surabhi here. And Nigel, of course, is joining us from the newsroom floor. Guys, hi. Good afternoon. Hi, hi afternoon. Good and what look a at good the, start, right? Yeah, look and, at the uh, mid-cap index, small-cap yeah. index, the advanced decline ratio. That really tells the story. <laughs> the market is doing the talking for us, and I think for once we Nigel, can't. Complain. We were all waiting for you to say something. <laughs> no, I think the market was waiting to have a full house on closing bell and said, like, okay, then let's rally, let's see. Look at the breadth of the market. I mean, that's the best we've seen in a long time. So, a good start to the fiscal year, but as I said earlier this morning as well, volumes could be a little bit tepid because, uh, yeah. you know, most global, many global markets are shut, and also we have a clearing holiday out here, so that could be another factor at play. But green on the screen, and we like it. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, so we basically made a new all-time high early on and then uh, it's been a little sideways. But, I mean, this is, of course, uh, not, nothing to complain about. I mean, Thursday, in a way, for many would have been disappointing because, I mean, then also, back on Thursday, the last session, we came within 10 points of a new high and then there was that very sharp correction which came. Uh, so did it, this is much more desirable. Support now, uh, I mean, if you want to track, is roughly around the 22,300 levels, the closest 20-hourly average. Uh, and uh, that is about, a, I mean, that even then, uh, with the rally that we've had, that's about 150 or points away. Bank Nifty, by the way, has also crossed above its previous high, which is last Thursday's high. So that is good news. Mid cap, small caps, big gains, two to three percent gain on the indices. As Nigel said, volumes, advanced decline, by the way, is nearly 10 is to one. But volumes in broader markets, mid and small caps, etc., uh, <clears throat> is a little lower. I mean, if you just sort biggest volume led gainers beyond the top 15, 20 odd names. Uh, compared to what we usually uh, are accustomed to, volumes are a little lower. It's global markets, plus I think uh, some tax-related uh, stuff as well, right? I mean, uh, there, there would have been a lot of selling and perhaps re-entry, etc., is uh, uh, going, to take, uh, going to take place over a period of time. Uh, real estate, metals are the two sectoral indices which are the top gainers, and we'll shed more light on both these with individual names over the next 60 minutes or so. Reema. Well, talking about the individual names there, JSW Steel, 5% gain on that. Tata Steel has hit a fresh high, and this is a stock which has gone up 56% in the last one year. The other notable gainers in the large cap space include Sriram Finance. That's the latest entrant in the Nifty. Last week, it corrected a bit on day one, but today it's bounced back smartly, 2.7% up on that. Adani Ports, NTPC, and HDFC Bank. That's been a steady stock. HDFC Bank, higher by 1.5%. On the losing side... Titan and Aisha Motors, uh, these are the two stocks. Aisha Motors posts the auto sales numbers. That's corrected a bit. I was looking at some more numbers. In fact, we will talk about auto sales as we go ahead. Uh, Mahindra and Mahindra has done okay. I mean, the passenger vehicle numbers at least are up, showing double-digit growth, 13% on the higher side. But uh, perhaps nothing uh, absolutely new and exciting in these numbers to spark a fresh move, given that auto stocks have been the best performers of the last fiscal year that's closed out. Nonetheless, let's look at the mid-cap screen because that's where the action is. As Nigel also mentioned, the market breadth has been extremely heartening uh, all through the day today. I mean, you've got eight stocks advancing for just about every one that's declining. So it's phenomenal breadth. And gains across the board. I mean, you've got some of the PSU names like a coaching shipyard, which is up now 11%. 
you know, you've got some real estate names like Purvankara moving higher. Uh, then there are stocks moving on news, PNB housing, because of the ratings upgrade. It's had a great session, 13, 14% up on, uh, on PNB housing. Prestige Estates, which has been buying so many land parcels and expanding their presence across, uh, you know, pretty much pan India. That's another real estate stock in focus. So plenty of names which are moving up on news or otherwise. And it's a very, very vibrant, broader market screen today. Nigel. All right. Uh, you know, two stocks I'm talking about since you mentioned some real estate names. Suntech Realty, that stock has moved to the high point of the day. Keep in mind, that's one of the big underperformers in the last one year or so. There was some selling overhang out there. It appears that majority of that could be absorbed because that stock is up close to 9%. The other one is Suraj Developers. That stock is up close to 20%. I recall the stock listed and from there it trended lower. So it was a relative underperformer post-listing. But that one as well has popped up in trade. So both these two names that haven't performed that great, both of them have moved to the high point of the day. How do you position yourself, though, for the final hour of trade? You have Mitesh Tucker, who joins us uh, on the show. Hi, Mitesh. Good afternoon. Good to see you win. Well, we had a good start, actually, on the headline index, both the Nifty and the Nifty Bank. But both of them are unable to sustain those higher levels. What are the levels you're looking at on both these two? Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, Well, I think Nifty, you know, Technically, it made a new high, but I think on the hourly closing chart, we didn't uh, have a closing beyond 22.525, which is what I was looking at. So, we're still hovering around the previous high, to my understanding. And therefore, the breakout hasn't happened, a fresh breakout hasn't happened. Uh, yeah. The structure is positive. I think eventually, if not today, as I said, maybe in a day or two, we'll see that uh, level of 22.530 being captured and the Nifty can then go higher. So, trade with positive bias, but uh, for the time, somebody wants to buy, Maybe you'll get a dip to about 23, 3, uh, 22, 353, uh, 30 zones to take a fresh long position uh, before the breakout happens. So I think, you know, we are positioned basically on the long side, but not very aggressive, given the fact that we are kind of, uh, you know, facing some supply around the previous size. Uh, on the stock side, Ambuja Cement has come on the radar. I think that's given a, a good move beyond the earlier swing highs. So buy here with a stop at about 614. Uh, look for targets of around... Uh, 650, 655 to begin with. And AU for bank and finance, uh, after a good correction, uh, is giving first signs of a reversal. So here, buy with a stop at 569 for targets of 605. Okay, thank you very much for that. Maruti's uh, March sales are up for your new screen. Total sales are up 10% year on year. Domestic sales have gone up by nearly 15%. The stock, though, has retreated a bit. It's now down close to about 0.3%. So just reacting a bit adversely, not too much, but it slipped a bit post the March auto sales numbers. PNB Housing Finance is surging in trade today. In fact, uh, the stock is now at a five-year high. This is after positive commentary from brokerages and an upgrade in ratings by CARE. Abhishek joins in with the details. Abhishek. Well, two rating uh, agencies have upgraded the rating on PNB uh, Housing Finance. First one, as you mentioned, CARE has upgraded the rating to AA plus from AA that they had earlier. The outlook is revised to stable from positive. Whenever the you know positive outlook is given, it is an indication that there may be a rating upgrade uh, going ahead. So the outlook uh, right now has been revised to stable from positive. A rating upgrade is for various instruments that they have, uh, like short and long-term bank loans, NCDs, tier 2 bonds, uh, fixed deposits, as well as commercial papers. Even ICRA has upgraded the credit rating to ICRA AA plus from AA that they had earlier. And outlook has been revised to stable from positive. We have Morgan Stanley writing on PNB Housing Finance. They have an outperformance rating and a target price of 970 per share. They say that 4Q is seasonally a strong quarter for housing finance companies, especially with respect to loan growth and asset quality. Asset quality actually improves on a sequential basis is what they meant. Valuation for PNB Housing Finance is attractive at price to book value of one time FI25 and in terms of price to earning, it's trading at nine times FI25. Back to you. Okay, that's uh, PNB Housing. It's definitely having a great day today. Thank you very much, Abhishek, for the details there. Let's welcome in Sudeep Bandhapadhyay, Group Chairman at Indy Trade Capital on the show. Sudeep, great to have you on as always. Uh, let's start with your thoughts on PNB housing. Of course, the ratings upgrade have been uh, well received by the market. But within housing finance, first of all, would you, you, would you buy into housing finance fresh right now in the market? Uh, and if so, then does PNB housing make the cut? Uh, absolutely. So the housing finance has been one of our favorite uh, segments in the uh, overall BFSI uh, pack. Uh, uh, look at the real estate, what is happening. I think there is so much of excitement around real estate, whether it's commercial or residential. 
uh, whether it's Mumbai or NCR or even Bangalore, uh, all over the country, I think there is a renewed interest in looking at real estate, buying real estate, uh, both the higher end as well as the mid range. The only area where I think it's still a little bit of tepid is the uh, uh, lower income segment housing. Uh, but we believe that uh, there will be an upswing there as well. Uh, to an extent, that also depends on interest rates coming down in the economy. And that's likely to happen sometime in the current fiscal. Uh, and if that happens, I think the lower income segment also will get a boost. Now, under the circumstances, housing finance companies should and would have a field day. Uh, uh, we have to, of course, pick up uh, a housing finance company with good systems and processes and a, a strong balance sheet. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, you know, definitely PNB Housing Finance qualifies there. And this credit upgrade today uh, also signifies that. Uh, one can also look at Canfin Homes. Uh, they had few incidences of fraud and, uh, you know, some certain challenges as far as their systems and processes. But what we understand is to a great extent that has been handled. And considering the valuation, even Canfin Home can be looked at. Mm. I remember you like LIC Housing Finance in the housing finance space. Which one would be your top pick, Sudeep? Well, if I have to, uh, you know, pick one, probably, and I'm uh, feeling a little aggressive today at the uh, you know, uh, start of the financial year, I'll go and pick Canfin Homes. Uh, I think it was beaten time and again because of uh, multiple incidences of fraud in the company. But Canfin Home will be my top pick. The second and third position will be between LIC Housing Finance and PNB Housing Finance. Got it. Uh, to stay on, we want to talk about uh, PSUs. Now, Bank of America has written a note on PSU banks and they see a 10 to 20 percent upside in earnings in FI25. Abhishek joins in with the details. Abhishek, back to you. Uh, well, Rima, as you mentioned, Bofa Securities has written on PSU banks. They feel that consensus estimate for FI25 still is conservative for PSU banks. And they see scope for 10 to 20 percent EPS upside, which means valuation upside of 10 to 20 percent as well, uh, given the fact that there is confidence on consistency, EPS and ROA delivery, which has been improving for the uh, PSU banks. And the fact that, you know, foreign ownership has actually increased in many of them. Uh, so they prefer Union Bank of India. India, uh, Canada Bank as well as Bank of India as they see better risk reward in smaller PSU banks on higher growth and uh, the fact that valuations are at comfortable level. So the key uh, stock picks why to go beyond SBI and Bob. The reasons that they have mentioned is that EPS expectation for SBI and Bob are already quite optimistic which leaves much lower room for uh, you know earning surprise. Uh, other PSU banks are still one to two years behind in terms of EPS recovery cycle positioning them to be a good factor that they can uh, actually surprise on positive side in FI25 and FI26. So there is a foreign ownership uh, in other PSU banks, still half of SBI on Bob. Uh, that, is, that provides a much headroom for them uh, to actually see an increase in their target price going ahead. So Canada Bank, Union Bank and Bank of India are a buy from BOFA, while SBI and Bob are neutral rating and they have an underperformance rating on uh, PNB back to you okay all right Abhishek thanks a lot uh, for that uh, Sudeep what do you make of this buffer note uh, they believe there's still more steam for PSU banking names would you conquer or do you believe that post the last year's outperformance maybe you'd rather go with the private sector names Nigel I believe that uh, there is merit in what Buffa is saying uh, I, I definitely uh, in, in the is in the camp that believes that uh, PSU banks have still some way to go. And uh, also the fact that SBI has uh, uh, run quite a bit and maybe the valuation upside at current level in SBI is not that much. But if you are a bit aggressive uh, investor and want to take a bet on Indian banking, I think uh, some of the uh, other PSU names which they are talking about, particularly we like Canada Bank, uh, can be looked at definitely. I think the valuation upside potential there is significant. Also, the fact this uh, uh, the institutional ownership, particularly foreign institutional ownership in some of these uh, mid-tier PSU banks is significantly lower compared to what it is in, let's say, Bob or a, a PNB or even, uh, of course, State Bank of India. So PSU banks, uh, mid-tier PSU banks definitely uh, looks attractive. And I think the rationale which some of uh, uh, some of the analysts are, uh, you know, uh, touting is that, you know, they have run their course and there is very little steam left. I think that probably is not correct. Uh, and we cannot have a, such a significant valuation gap between the leading PSU banks and some of these uh, 
uh, uh, you know, uh, private sector banks and some of these PSUs. So this valuation gap, there will be, uh, uh, to an extent, it will get bridged. I'm not saying they will quote at the kind of valuation uh, what our ICICI or Axis or HDFC is or should be quoting, but the gap will definitely come down and that gives a significant opportunity of valuation upside in a Canada bank or even Union Bank. Okay, uh, got that. That's uh, the PSUs, PSU banks, and of course, some of the other financials that we've spoken of. Today, however, is a very strong day for metals. Must take that uh, on board. And it's been very consistent. There's no selling on these stocks, particularly some of the ferrous names like JSW Steel, Tata Steel, 4%, 5% up. I mean, it's been really good going. The good news actually came in from China this morning when, they, when we got the manufacturing data. The latest numbers are in expansionary territory, above 50 and it's the first time in five, six months that that has happened. So it seems that that buzz has rubbed off really well on stock sentiment here today. Uh, Sudeep, do you like uh, metals, ferrous, non-ferrous? And if yes, then again, you know, which stocks uh, would you be looking at? Um, you know, uh, I think that to a great extent, uh, one has to be a little aggressive investor to be in metals. Uh, it is volatile by nature. And to a great extent, it depends on what's happening in China. As you rightly said, uh, with the Chinese PMI numbers coming uh, better than expected and much better than what it was uh, for the last many, many months, I think there is excitement back in the metals. We have seen what's happening to copper uh, as far as the uh, metal prices are concerned. And uh, some of the other uh, a a aluminum is strong and pretty much all the metals are getting uh, the benefit of this Chinese PMI upswing. So I believe that uh, you know this excitement is going to continue. Now, uh, when we come to Indian stocks, one has to remember that demand in India itself is very strong for metals with all the construction, infrastructure, and, and all the capital expenditure going on, uh, both uh, government as well as to an extent uh, private. I think the demand for metals is going to be very, very strong. Under the circumstances, I, I, if I have to pick, I think I will go for uh, some of the steel names. Tata Steel continues to remain a favorite. So does JSW. I think both of them have access to captive uh, uh, ore, and that, uh, to an extent, cushions them uh, from the price fluctuations in the iron. Uh, so that's that's number one. Number two, I think copper is, again, a great bet at current level. So Hint Copper, even at current level, can definitely be looked at. Mm. By the way, one of the big movers of 2024 calendar year is Indus Stars. It's up 57% since the beginning of the year. You know, the whole of last year, probably even longer than that, Indus Stars and Vodafone Idea share price largely mirrored. Uh, because Indus Stars, you know, the prospects were dependent on what's happening with Vodafone Idea. But this year, that link is broken. Year to date, Vodafone Idea is down 12%. While Indus Star is up 57. Some of the reasons are that one, in the Q3 earnings, we learned that Vodafone Idea has been making monthly payments. In fact, they've also cleared some of their past dues. They still have receivables, what Indus Star still has receivables from Vodafone Idea, but the improvement in Vodafone Idea's cash flow has helped Indus Stars in bringing down their, you know, the doubtful debt with the receivables that they have. Uh, secondly, tomorrow is Vodafone Idea's EGM from 3 p.m. onwards, where they will seek the shareholder approval for the 20,000 crore of fundraise. And thirdly, today you've also got a CLSA note where they believe that the D-rating is reversing for Indus Stars and they've raised the target price to 335 on Indus Stars, so still some upside in that stock. Uh, Sudeep, we've spoken about Vodafone Idea in the past, but today I wanted you to share your thoughts on Indus Stars. Now, the stock has doubled in the last one year. In fact, in the last three months, as I said, it's up 57%. Do you think there is more upside or it's, um, you know, the share price, the valuation captures the survival of Indus Vodafone Idea and the possibility of all the past receivables getting cleared from Vodafone Idea? Uh, Rima, to an extent, it does capture. I think this entire uh, excitement is on the back of the fact that uh, Vodafone Idea will get funded and the dues will get cleared. Uh, that uh, assumption is already baked in as far as Indus Tower valuation is concerned. But having said that, I believe that fundamentally also Indus Tower is a strong play on this entire telecom sector. And we know with uh, from 4G, the transition is happening to 5G. And from here on also in future, I'm sure we will move to uh, 6G and other advanced variants. All these definitely uh, are, are, are to a great extent dependent on the tower company's capacity, capability, and upgradation. Uh, so under the circumstances, they are critical uh, infrastructure for the telecom uh, play. 
and under, uh, and and Indus is a very very important player in this ecosystem. So uh, if we are uh, bullish on the telecom and the penetration of telecom and upgradation of our uh, telecom delivery system, I think Indus uh, will continue to remain a good play. Uh, yes, uh, the upside may not be immediate because uh, the excitement around Vodafone uh, uh, remaining viable and clearing the dues has already been factored in. But somebody is a long-term investor, they can definitely look at uh, remaining invested in Indus Tower. Okay, that's Indus Towers. All right, so we'll leave it on that note for today. Thank you very much for joining in and giving us your perspective on all the themes that we have discussed. Well, we do have to take a quick break on Closing Bell right now, but as we take the break, here's a reminder, a programming note of sorts. CNBC TV 18 presents India Exchange, where market experts and industry stalwarts will collaborate and uh, insightful discussions will take place on India's economic path and the evolving dynamics of the Indian market. Don't miss out on this. Tune in to CNBC TV 18 on the 4th of April, 5.30 p.m. onwards. Welcome back. The action is all in the broader markets. The mid-cap index up 1.6%. Small-cap index is up 2.5%. And one of the big movers uh, in the small-cap universe today is Dynamatic Technologies. That's up 4%. ICSA Securities has initiated coverage with a bullish call. Vamakshi joins us to tell us more. Vamakshi, first tell us a little bit about what the company does and then why ISEC likes this uh, stock. Well, absolutely, Reema. Uh, the stock is a high flyer in trade today. Uh, but largely, the company operates three business segments, hydraulics, aerospace and defense, and metallurgy. Uh, in fact, each segment contributes around a third of revenue uh, for the company. And uh, But out of all three segments, uh, what ICICI Security largely believes is that the aerospace and defense segment is likely to drive the earnings growth for this counter, given that the company is the sole supplier of FTBs, that is, flap track beams for Airbus. 86% order backlog. Not only that, recent order wins that have been made by the company for flight critical aerostructures signify that the company is participating more and more in supply chain of global aerospace OEMs. Apart from that, there's a huge domestic opportunity as well given increasing potential of regional connectivity in India. Apart from that, when we look at the company's order book, it, uh, order book, it stands at around uh, 16,000, 17,000 crores and the order book for the aerospace business itself is around 11 to 
at 12,000 crores, which will be executed over the next 10 years. And given uh, this uh, uh, execution, they're expecting overall revenue to triple for the company and aerospace revenue will actually double over the next 10 years. They're expecting uh, the contribution to rise to almost 45% uh, by FY30 as compared to 34% in FY23. There are other divisions, hydraulics and metallurgy divisions are also turning a fresh leaf. The positive uh, demand commentary out there, uh, they're also expecting gross debt to come up by almost 25% uh, to nearly 350 crores rose by March 24 significant free cash flow generation is also likely to result in the company being net cash by FY27 uh, recent order wins uh, will propel the EBITDA to nearly two times of FY23 levels and this is expected to take place by FY27 in fact they're also expected to post an EBITDA margin of 17 to 18% which is in comparison uh, to the last five-year average of almost 13% is definitely higher. As far as valuations are concerned, uh, ICSI Securities appears to be quite comfortable on those ones as well because the company trades at uh, sub-35 uh, times FY26 EPS as compared to nearly 45 to 60 times to other peers in the aerospace ecosystem. So largely a very bullish note coming in from ICSI Securities on this counter. They've initiated coverage with a buy rating, target price at 10,250 per share. Mm, okay, all right. Uh... <clears throat> Thanks very much, Vamakshi, for that. Uh, so that's a new one, right? Uh, the, of course, the move on the stock from... Uh, but it's unfair to look at lows. I mean, unnatural, right? Lows of COVID was uh, 500 rupees. So from 500, it's come up to 8,000. But, you know, forget that low. Take a look at the uh, price, the high pre-COVID. Uh, because actually, it had a pretty terrible time from 2015 onwards. 2015 stock was at about 4,000 rupees. And then it had just had a one-way move down. Uh, to that 500 rupee low and then of course it's come up it's doubled from the pre-covid low which was of course I mean, many years ago it's doubled from that level uh, as of today i mean almost exactly double 8000 is where that is 30 35 times uh, on uh, forward earnings as what makshi says is what icic securities is projecting at the other sort of uh, stock which is doing very well is bsc now bsc the stock uh, had a fantastic move and then for the last 5 months it basically consolidated didn't go anywhere uh, after the run-up that we had. And today, with the 6-7% move that we have on the BSE stock, it's taken out the five-month range, uh, a five-month range for which it's been consolidating. If you can have the chart up, uh, you'll uh, know what I'm talking about. Uh, now, the, the you know, there are lots of reasons, right? I mean, there's obviously always that thing about where does it trade relative to what NSE is trading in the unlisted market and whether speculation about when that uh, NSE will list and what that can mean for BSE, etc. But Leaving all of that aside, the only data, the new data point that we have is the ex, uh, the volume data for the month of uh, March, uh, which just ended. And the, uh, we have the volume market share figures. So uh, this is uh, average daily turnover. Uh, on the FNO side, I mean, actually, FNO is where BSC seems to be making a fair bit of uh, advance. Its market share actually is now improved to 17%. Uh, <clears throat> at least, I think, a few... Uh, over the last, I think, five or six months, uh, that's a meaningful addition in market share that we've seen. Cash segment, uh, market share stands at about 8.5%. But the point is, you know, cash, overall cash volumes have been flattish now for some time. FNO is essentially where, uh, you know, uh, volume activity, etc., has been pretty buoyant. And here, BSE seems to be uh, gaining uh, market share. So it's gotten up to about 17% or so. But uh, we'll try and have the <clears throat> BSE management, we've had them... Uh, over over the last couple of months, occasionally, we'll try and have them back uh, to talk about what's the latest and what do they make of this market share uh, numbers which have come in. But I think uh, let's bring in our next guest as well. Ajay Vora is Head of Equities at Novama Asset Management. Ajay, good to have you with us here. Uh, good afternoon. You know, just to... I, I want you to talk about the capital market plays, etc. But just to begin with a broad sense of the market, because I think we spoke to you exactly about a month ago uh, and... Uh, your broad view uh, back then was that things should remain a little ranged for a while, uh, right? Uh, do you still hold on to that view? We've just made a fresh high. It's possible, I mean, you know, you make incrementally small highs, but, I mean, it doesn't really go anywhere in a very meaningful fashion. Just your thoughts, Ajay. Yeah, hi, good afternoon, Prashant, and thanks for having me. Uh, so I agree that, you know, we are still maintaining the same view that uh, we'll be in this range and uh, we cannot, you know, pinpoint on a couple of hundred points here and there. But broadly, I think that, you know, somewhere between 21 and a half thousand to 23,000 should be the uh, decent range. And I think it's better we consolidate in this range for a while. Uh, the run-up has been pretty good. Last year has been fantastic with index itself moving up almost 30%. Uh, 
and mid and small cap indices up almost 50 60 percent uh, so my sense is that you know uh, it's a good uh, i would say earnings led rally what we have seen uh, it's better we consolidate and then maybe you know once we start getting more confidence about fi26 numbers uh, we'll see we'll start seeing a fresh leg to this but uh, as we all know that you know market is all about sectors and stocks so even within this range, there'll be a lot many stocks and sectors which will end up doing pretty well and outperforming the broader indices. Any opportunities you want to share with us? Any opportunities that you've spotted that you can talk about? So Rima, we are, uh, you know, tactically, we are pretty positive on the whole metal space. And, uh, you know, as uh, you guys also have been discussing, uh, it seems that, you know, the data has really turned around uh, to some extent at the margin, I would say, from China perspective. And also, if you look at the steel prices also, uh, you know, over last three to four years, they have been in this range of around $500, $600. So my sense is that any sort of pickup uh, globally, and anyways, we are entering a period where interest rates are likely to be, you know, softened and liquidity will ease out a bit, maybe in the second half of the year. Uh, it it uh, gels pretty well for the whole commodity space. Uh, so I think that, you know, Indian players are pretty well positioned right now, uh, especially the integrated ones. Uh, I think that there is a decent upside uh, in the metal space going forward. And another sector which we really like uh, and continue to like is the real estate space. Uh, the demand is just getting stronger and stronger every quarter. Uh, so I was just discussing with someone that, you know, at, at Pan India level, earlier we used to sell around 600 million square feet of residentials. Uh, right now we are selling close to 280, 300 million square feet in a particular quarter. So, you know, that that industry has really become large now. And most importantly, we have seen a decent consolidation also within this space. So I, I think that, you know, a lot of pent up demand uh, for the first time buyers, as well as, you know, people who want to upgrade uh, will play out, will continue to play out over next two to three years. So okay. I think that, you know, yeah, real estate and, uh, you know, metals is something which we like from Europe. All right. Hi, Ajay. Good afternoon and good to see you. And Nigel on this side. Uh, Ajay, if you could name a few stocks, you know, I recall we had discussed Glenmark Pharma, Vocart. You know, both those two calls worked out very, very well. I recall a few months ago on this show itself, we talked about them. Even OMCs is what we had spoken about. So you've had a good run in the last four to five months. Or give us a couple of more stock names. You've got Relty as well as Metal Index. If you want to get into those sectors and give us a couple of names or from any other sector. So I think, uh, Nigel, you know, uh, specific stocks will be difficult. But as I said that, you know, uh, within metals, uh, the integrated steel players are looking excellent. And uh, within real estate space also, you know, you need to pick uh, pockets uh, where the pricing power is there and demand is extremely strong, which is, you know, uh, something like Mumbai and Bangalore. Uh, and also, you know, to some extent, the NCR region. Uh, players have a very strong balance sheet right now. And uh, they are getting uh, incremental funds as well. So... My sense is that, you know, uh, if the demand continues to be strong, both these uh, sectors can do really well from here on. But uh, Ajay, hi, good afternoon, Surabhi here. Now, the question hi. is that uh, I think that's something that people are grappling with across many sectors. Underlying demand trends perhaps are looking good and, uh, you know, no one's doubting the pure fundamentals. But the question is how much is baked in the price? Because stocks have also rallied. Real estate along with PSUs is the best performing part of the market in the last 12 months, right? So what about valuations? Yeah, so Surbi, we have seen that, you know, uh, we may continue to look at valuations uh, till a point of time. Uh, but if the earnings trajectory continues to be very strong uh, at the rate of, say, 20 to 30 percent, those valuations can sustain and maybe uh, also re-rate to some extent. So uh, smaller players, you know, still are pretty cheap, I would say, uh, within both the sectors, uh, even within real, uh, real estate. Uh, there are players uh, who have decent land bank. And because of the balance sheet issues, they were not able to launch many projects. But... Uh, once that is sorted out, you know, these all names are also looking pretty interesting. So I, I think that, you know, valuations uh, uh, become a question where uh, earnings growth rate stagnates or maybe starts declining. But uh, if the earnings growth rate will continue at 20 to 30 percent, I think valuations can also sustain. On metals, the tactically bullish call that you have, is it for ferrous, non-ferrous? How long would you ride it out? So we are more positive on ferrous, uh, Rima. But uh, at the margin, you know, even the non-ferrous, uh, within non-ferrous, a couple of names are looking very interesting. Uh, you know, there has been a, 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 a company where, you know, a lot of uh, issues has been there on the balance sheet side. Uh, we believe that, you know, if the commodity cycle uh, picks up from year on, over next 6 to 12 months, even those issues get sorted out, then the stock can re-rate. 
So within you know Ferris, uh, as I said, that the integrated players are looking very good, and within non Ferris, you know uh, that particular name is also interesting. Mm. Uh, Ajay, you know, I was talking about BSC earlier. Uh, do you do you own these names? What's your view? I mean, actually, Angel has done very well. I mean, actually, it's recovered. Uh, it did fallen. Uh, BSC had, it was consolidating. That's come up. M6 is up about six six and a half percent. M6, yeah. of course, is a monopoly in its space. BSC yeah, so Prashant, actually, if you look at it, you know, all these players, uh, what you talked about, uh, we all need to understand that at one point of time, the entire market share belonged to one particular exchange. The newer players or the or the players uh, who are not having that kind of market, if they manage to garner that incremental 2, 3, 4%, eventually it adds a lot of value to to nine months, uh, BSE has done a phenomenal job in terms of gaining market share. And it's, uh, you know, dominance in that space. Uh, BSE still has a long way to go in. So my sense is that, you know, this space is getting very interesting with more and more participation coming in and we have seen buy and participate and these are the only mediums through which you can actually end up participating so i think uh, there is a long uh, you know i would say opportunity a very uh, and uh, these names are still looking interesting okay well actually even the novama stock has done so well right all capital market uh, related businesses oh, yeah. they have really boomed in uh, in the last couple of weeks and months uh, Ajay, but where do you stand on IT? Because that's the next event that the market is moving towards. And Rima was telling us, I mean, consensus for something like a TCS earnings. It's all uh, lukewarm, right? Low to mid uh, single digits. That's that's the broad word on the street out there. But how do you look at stock positioning and what's the sense? So I think, Sulvi, that, you know, till the time we are not able to see, uh, uh, I would say, at least above nifty earnings growth. And, you know, this year... Uh, Nifty earnings growth will be closer to 20%. Next year, we are building in closer to 15%. I think till the time we are not seeing large cap names growing beyond 15%, it will be difficult for stocks to outperform, outperform. And uh, therefore, I think it will be more stock specific within the whole IT space because this whole you know uh, cloud uh, transformation and the AI technology and the N number of other disruptions which are taking place, uh, companies who are at the forefront of that uh, will end up benefiting. Uh, but as I said that, you know, the larger companies have become too large and therefore, uh, you know, growing at that uh, on that base will become really difficult. So to till that extent, I would, I, I would believe that, you know, they will stay in this range uh, rather than outperforming the overall index. Mm. Uh, Ajay, what about auto? Last year, names like Tata Motors, Bajaj Auto, Hero Motor Corp, TVS, they all clocked in a double digit, uh, sorry, a triple digit return, 100% plus. Uh, it's not, the sector is not in your favoured list. Why is that? No, so auto, uh, Rima, we have been extremely bullish since last one year. In fact, you know, we had a massive overweight position in auto since last one year and that has helped us outperform. Uh, but from here on, uh, you know, it will be difficult because market has actually extrapolated the growth. And if you see that, you know, there has been a significant margin improvement on back of lower commodity prices which we believe that, you know, can uh, turn around a bit, uh, not to a very large extent. But we have seen that, you know, whenever commodity prices move higher, uh, there is a lag with which the companies are able to uh, pass on until that time, you know, margins can come under pressure. But as I said that, you know, there can be a couple of names within the auto space also, uh, which can outperform. But as a whole, I think that, you know, if, even if you look at the growth contribution of the sector to the overall nifty growth, uh, it used to be somewhere close to, you know, uh, three odd percent, three to four percent. It has now reached to somewhere close to eight percent. So my sense is that, you know, uh, anywhere between eight to ten percent, the overall growth contribution uh, will stabilize. And therefore, we have seen this kind of performance last year where stocks have gone up almost 100 uh, percent. I believe it will be more earnings growth led rather than valuation regulating for most of the names from here on. Still an overweight for you, autos on the whole. So auto, we continue to maintain overweight, but not that significant what we had at the beginning of the year. From year on, we are positive on, you know, as I said, uh, metals, uh, pharma, and realty. real estate. Yeah. Okay, got that, Ajay. 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good chatting with you today. Lots of perspective on a lot of different themes. And we look forward to the next conversation. Well, given that we were just discussing autos, I guess uh, what Ajay is saying seems to be reflecting in the way the market's reacting to the auto sales numbers for the month gone by as well, because it's a bit of a sell-on news that's playing out on most of these names. Though the numbers don't look that bad, but let's go across Sonia and uh, get a lowdown on this. Sonia, so what's the verdict so far? So it's been a mixed bag, actually, as you rightly pointed out. The numbers that have come through so far are largely below expectations, but not as bad as perhaps one would have thought. So let me start with tractors, which has seen the weakest numbers this time. Escort's total tractor sales down by almost 17%, domestic sales down by 16%, and steep fall in exports as well. The company has said that there's a shift in the Chaitra Navratri festival to April this year, along with last season's erratic monsoon patterns and resultant low water reservoir levels, is something that affected agricultural sentiments this time, and hence that resulted in delayed harvesting of rabi crops. If you move to M&M as well, the... Auto sales were up just about 4 odd percent. The tractor sales have been under pressure for M&M. Tractor sales are down 26 percent. But the management is quite optimistic. They say that there's a forecast of a normal southwest monsoon this year. And the monsoon outlook is expected to further boost tractor demand in the coming months. Now, if you look at Aisha Motors, uh, they reported their numbers a while back. Over there as well, the numbers are below what the street was estimating. Total Royal Enfield sales grew just about 5 percent at 75,551 units. While it is actually the C EV sales, which are under pressure, if you look at it, the Volvo Aisha commercial vehicle sales have fallen 5.5%, coming in at 11,242 units. Uh, in fact, there's been a trend in the last couple of months of weakness in the commercial vehicle sector, and that looks like it continues even in the month of March. Back to you. All right, uh, <clears throat> uh, Sonia, thanks very much uh, for that. So that's a wrap out of the uh, auto sales numbers that we've had uh, so far. And we'll, of course, get more and update you as, as they come along. We'll take a quick commercial break here. We come, uh, come back, get you a check on what's happening in dealing, room, uh, dealing rooms. Nimesh is going to be here with D Street Chatter. And, of course, after that, uh, short-term technical trading ideas with our experts coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, final 20 minutes of trade today, but it's been a rather good session, though volume's still a little bit tepid. A good time to move to D Street Chatter. Nimesh joins us after a bit of a break. Hey, Nimesh, good to have you back. Tell us, what Thank are you, you picking up in terms of action today? Well, in a good start uh, to, the, to the new series, right? And the, and the good part is that there is a good participation in the broader markets. That's where, uh, you know, the stocks are up. It's yeah. been a bit of a strong pullback as well. And I guess there is a technical factor as well for that mid -cap, the mid-cap and broad cap, small cap to do well. The reason is uh, we are starting the, the, the new calendar year, so to speak. So the books have opened up for, for retail investors and HNIs to take positions. Uh, the funding has started as well. That typically happens you know, mid-March. The funding stops for most of the retail and HNI mm. investors. There is an unwinding as well. We saw that pressure playing out in the, in the, in the second half of March. That seems to be behind now, and maybe that explains a big move in the broader market stocks today. The index is up 1.5%, but a lot of individual names who have beaten down very sharply have seen a sharp pullback in today's market. So that explains a big move in the broader market stocks. Having said that, the flows are quite muted. That's the broad feedback as well. So this rally is not led by a very large FIR or a DIA buying. That's the overall feedback. And, and lastly, uh, from a sector point of view, it's the metals which has done really well today, largely on the back of the Chinese data. But in general, the feedback is uh, this month could be for the, for the month of uh, metal stocks. So, Watch out for big momentum in the in the metal names. But it looks like at least in the first half of the April series, mm. this momentum in the broader markets can continue because the because there is fresh leg now. The stocks have underperformed as well. So a bit of a pullback is expected in the broader market stock. Well, that's good news then, right? Because portfolios got hurt yeah. in that March uh, 13th, 14th thought. But tell us individual stocks, what are you picking up? So in terms of individual names, the first stock in my list is Shilpa Medica. Big, stock, big move in that stock as well. The volume is on the higher side. I understand the company is likely to raise funds uh, from some market investors very soon, so watch out for that news in Shilpa Medicare. The second stock is Concord. Within the PSU names, this stands out purely on the back of very strong buy flows that I expect. High delivery volumes in Concord, 
in today's market. The third stock is BEL. Even that is buzzing into it on good volumes as well. And, this, and there is a strong anticipation that the company is likely to bag a very large or defense order very soon. So that's, that's keeping BEL exciting. And the last name is ITC. That's been consolidating after that big block where, the, where bats sold out. Now I understand there are, there are, there are bid interest from larger FIs uh, in ITC. So it looks like some bit of institutional interest is back in ITC at these levels. All right, uh, Nimesh, thanks very much uh, for that. Uh, so that's an interesting list of uh, stocks as always. Uh, I think uh, some of them, of course, are buzzing as well. Shilpa, for example, has been up, uh, okay, it's up 7.5%. So uh, it was up about 4 5%. But this move has come starting 2.30 p.m. Uh, look at that. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, the, <clears throat> the close on Thursday was uh, 4.60. And uh, it, it was up 4 5%, but then... Uh, from about 480, the move to about 494, where it is now almost 500 rupees has come in the last uh, one hour, uh, essentially, on Shilpa Medicare. So keep an eye out on those names, as Nimesh points out. But what to buy or sell today for a reverse trade tomorrow? Mitesh is here with that perspective. Mitesh, uh, what should one do? Yeah. yeah BTST on uh, Bandhan Bank, I think, is, you know, again, a setup which is similar to AU Bank, which I had a call earlier. Uh, it's reversing after a good decline. So, BTST with the stop at 186 uh, and a target of 190, 191. Uh, it's quite likely. And the other uh, stock, you know, uh, which I like is a BTST on uh, Bayok 1 with a stop at about uh, 266 for targets of 274, half 275. Okay, got that. Let's get to the big story, the big mover, and that's the entire metal index up 3.5%. Individual stocks like JSW Steel, Tata Steel are soaring. This is after manufacturing activity in China expanded for the first time in six months. Manisha joins in with the details. Manisha. Well, thank you for that. Yes, uh, it has been strong Chinese data. The first number for the month of March is out and the manufacturing numbers have seen the best gain in last uh, uh, many months, in 13 months actually, at around 50.8 for the month of March. And this is after six months of constant decline that for the month of March, you have positive numbers coming in. Well, actually, when you look at the month of Feb as well, for China, out of 10 data, eight was on the positive side. So for the month of March, with the first number out is on manufacturing and that is on the stronger side. So market has started to believe that China in in some sense is stabilizing now and that is where the support is coming in from. Apart from that, the global infra thrust has been quite on the stronger side. There is increased in defense spend which also needs metal and that has been a support from there. There's a safe haven buying intangible commodities. The street is also anticipating uh, rate cuts going forward in the month of June, not just from the US but from European central banks as well. And then there are some mine disruptions and lower inventories which have been supportive. The best of the gains, by the way, have come in for copper which is trading at around 11 month high. We've seen 5% of gains for copper in the month of March. The Chinese smelters are proposing a 5 to 10% cut in production, and that in turn has surged the copper prices to this 11 month highs where we are trading right now. The street does believe that we are going to consolidate around these levels, but it is accumulation and buy calls that I have seen across various reports when it comes to many of these non ferrous metals. Okay, all right. So that is the metal space, and the big party continues, particularly on copper over there. Manisha got it. Thank you very much for that. Well, let's move on now. Rajesh Bhatia, CIO at ITIAMC, is with us. Rajesh, good to have you on the show. Thanks very much for joining in. Since we're on the subject, and you know, metals have had a nice run. Lots of excitement now around China, as Manisha was just explaining. Uh, where do you place it? Where is it in your larger scheme of things? Is, is it a sector that you are liking at this point? Well, we may not be the best uh, people to comment on global commodities, but here is what I would say. I think the world is uh, looking at China and paying attention to China that it better revive its growth uh, trajectory because it's a huge producer of uh, some of these metals. For steel, for instance, uh, it produces a billion tons of steel every year. And there is a fear that if that is not consumed within that country, it'll start exporting it uh, to the world and therefore deflating uh, some of these uh, uh, prices. Uh, so there is real concern uh, in the globe that be China better kind of revive its growth trajectory and, and consume a lot of this industrial products uh, internally as there is trouble uh, uh, elsewhere. So, uh, you know, I would say that that is what you, you can see that uh, the Chinese made a difference today. Uh, I think that's the driver that will need to kind of uh, uh, be necessary these commodities or uh, metal stocks to kind of do well. But, uh, you, sh you know, we are not the best people to comment on global commodities. 
All right. Hi, Raj. Good to see you in. Well, uh, you know, we're starting off a new fiscal. We are last year. You know, you have the headline index that goes up 28, 29% in a single year. With mid and small caps up 60, 70%. You couldn't ask for more. But for this year, you know, we're expecting more realistic returns, so to call it. What would be your top uh, bet in terms of a sectorial bet for uh, the coming year, that's FY25? And also, do you expect this year actually to belong to the large caps in comparison to the small and mid caps? Yeah. Hey, Nigel. So, so you know, we are, we, we are looking at it from a movie perspective, not really a photo perspective. What I mean is that the continuation of what started in last March, and like we've been pointing out, this is a bull market. You can see the breadth of sectors that are kind of participating, and that will tell you that's a very strong market, and there is a breadth of sectors that are doing well. Here is what we are doing as we speak. Uh, I think what we are doing is actually improving the quality of our portfolio. We are reducing the beta of our portfolio and moving to sectors or businesses that we think have kind of stronger execution capabilities, stronger business models, and valuations which we think are more reasonable. And uh, from a returns perspective, I think, like I said, we are still in a bull market. A bull market has its momentum of its own. Never underestimate a bull market. We are not at valuations which we think are extremely uh, excessive. Of course, we, are, we have done well, as you point out, in the last one year, but we are still at 20 times uh, nifty uh, one year forward, which, we, which is not really a bubble territory uh, valuation. So my sense is that uh, uh, I think there's still room for stocks to do well. For a bull market to kind of uh, uh, stop, you require a counter force. Uh, and we are also looking for that risk, which should manifest itself, which will kind of stop this uh, momentum. But like I said, never underestimate the bull market. The journey is continuing. Just stay invested with your companies, you know, as you move forward. Mm. Uh, Rajesh, so in order to reduce the beta in your portfolio and improve the quality, uh, what steps have you taken? Where is it that you've trimmed your holding, come down from an overweight to a neutral or perhaps even gone underweight. Take us through the you know portfolio reconstitution. Sure. So basically, you know, in a what happens in a bull market is that good quality companies go up, and so do poor quality companies, right? Of course, there is economic momentum uh, for those poor quality companies as well. Uh, I am a little more careful where you know we have benefited enormously from cost of goods uh, uh, coming down, right? Because a lot of these metal prices, et cetera, have come down. And therefore, that has resulted in gross margin expansion. I'm not necessarily seeing strong top-line growth commensurate to justify the increased valuation that has ha already happened for some of the sectors. For instance, tires, or even probably, for, for instance, automobile. Uh, cost Costs have come down, margins have expanded, but you're not necessarily seeing the same kind of top-line growth. Uh, it's a good a good time to kind of shave off some of the uh, positions there. But you have, at the same time, very good life insurance companies, general insurance companies, which are ex executing extremely well. Telecom companies, these are less cyclical businesses. Uh, these are very strong modes. You don't have as much of a challenge in their execution. Uh, stay invested in those opportunities. Mm. Rajesh, is the uh, high afternoon is uh, you you don't have a view on commodities, but you have a view on the overall global uh, sort of uh, scenario, right? So yeah. you had a very benign, nice uh, first quarter. So are you expecting things to, <clears throat> I mean, that 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 to be tested in the second quarter uh, at, at some level? I mean, the mid-January on uh, fall that we had, basically it lasted two weeks, three and a half percent, that's it. Uh, so short and sweet. Are you expecting something more? No, Prashant, you're absolutely right. I mean, we're in a, global Goldilocks scenario, right? It's not only India which is touching a new high. US is at a new high, Japan, uh, Germany, France, all of these markets are at a new high. So we are we are going through a phase where inflation is coming off globally, but the economic uh, activity is not deteriorating at such a rate where you'd start worrying about a severe recession. So that is a very, very good scenario for equities, not only for India, but globally. So macroeconomic stability is one of the key reasons why we have st still had a very, very good uh, uh, equity run that uh, we are seeing. Now, for this to get disrupted, one of the two things have to happen. Either we have to go through a very, very severe kind of downturn or a recession globally, which we don't see at this moment, or inflation. The last two numbers, Jan and Feb, uh, in inflation data was surprising to the upside if that kind of accelerates. So one of those two things need to happen for the this comfort zone of the markets to kind of get shaken. Uh, so 
So that is what is required, but we don't see that happening at this moment. And that's why you're seeing this continuation, even as we speak today, uh, of this bull run that, uh, uh, that is happening. Rajesh, uh, do stay on. We need to slip into a very short break. We'll come back and it will be about five minutes left for markets to close. Welcome back. Well, we have a couple of minutes to go before the day goes out and it's, uh, you know, splendid the way the mid-cap market has managed to retain all of those gains. And, uh, you know, it's really been good going for stocks pretty much across the board today. Uh, Rajesh, uh, you know, just come in on a couple of the PSU plays, not PSU banks as much, but a lot of the other stocks that have had a phenomenal last 12 to 15 months. Uh, now, here, what what is the path that you're choosing? Are you staying invested? Are you looking to buy dips? Because the corrections come and gone and it hasn't really shaken up PSU stocks. Yeah, so that's really where the leadership of the market is, right? Every bull market has a leader and public sector uh, enterprises and investment plays, right? See the best sectors that have done well, real estate, capital goods, uh, et cetera, all economically sensitive sectors have do done really well in the last 12 months or so. So PSUs are a leader of this uh, bull run. Until the bull run kind of lasts, I expect PSUs to kind of continue to do well. Now you have to choose your segments where you are comfortable. We have exposures to PSU banks, uh, power some power companies, some defense companies in the PSU categories, and we continue to kind of own them. Uh, I, I would not say that the, the valuations of some of these companies are cheap or attractive, but uh, like I said, the, a bull market is an animal of its own, and until that trajectory kind of lasts, stay invested. <clears throat> yeah, no, absolutely. Rajesh, while you reduce, uh, you know, beta in the portfolio, you also want to, you want to have some uh, wild card, wild, I don't know, wild card entries is the right word, to play the bull market, right? Because, I mean, yep. things can go, uh, and ma markets are markets. Uh, so, have you added anything in that sense? Any, any entries? Uh, I wouldn't say, if, like I said, you know, I think we are kind of, increasing weights to where we feel comfortable. We have mm. we have a fairly diversified kind of portfolio. And look, so many sectors are doing well, you know, right? So I, all all portfolios are actually doing well. So I, I don't see any uh, uh, any lopsidedness except for consumer or IT. Most other sectors are, are kind of doing well. So uh, given that we run a diversified portfolio, these are tinkering in the portfolio that we are doing. Uh, uh, you know, to, to, like I said, reduce beta and improve the quality of the portfolio. Okay, all right. You know, Pr Prashant, uh, one, one comment I wanted yeah. to kind of make uh, to your global question, right? You know, what we must realize is that interest rates have gone from 0% to 5 plus percent globally, right? Particularly led by the US, which means the gun has been reloaded by central banks, right? So this is a... Uh, stabilization factor that we may have for the markets as you move forward. God forbid if there are risks to the market on the downside, uh, I think you have central bankers now with a fresh level of ammunition to kind of uh, uh, stabilize the macro. 
So that's something that I just wanted to point out, which goes in favor of uh, the markets as you move forward. Mm, absolutely. Uh, you know, we leave it there, Rajesh. Great co conversation as always. Appreciate you joining in and uh, running us through uh, those views on the market. Well, uh, thanks uh, indeed. Market will end about 140 points up, which means it'll be, uh, you know, what, 80 odd points off the uh, lows. The high was made at about 22, 530 or so. <clears throat> so maybe 80, 90 points off the uh, highs uh, of today, which of course was made early in the day. Uh, look at the small cap index ends 3% up, mid cap index ends one and three quarters of a percent higher. Uh, Nifty Bank, not so much. Uh, it uh, does. It did cross last uh, Thursday's high, uh, but I think the Nifty Bank has uh, almost one percent actually, uh, as far as close is concerned. Off the highs there as well, but not by much uh, on the Bank Nifty. Market breadth very very strong. Something like nine is to one in favour of advances is what we had today. Well, the Nifty Bank is still about a little more than two percent away from its uh, high levels, so there is still some distance to go there. Metals was the star sector. The Nifty Metal Index ending with a gain of two, you know, almost uh, three and a half percent after the China manufacturing data positively surprised and gives hope that uh, demand will accelerate and pick up. JSW Steel, Tata Steel were the top two Nifty gainers. Other than that, real estate index zoomed nearly four percent. Some of the other big movers in the large cap space include Devi's Laboratory, Sri Ram Finance. Uh, these are stocks with gains of more than three percent. Adani Ports rallied. HDFC Bank steady, along with that, LNT provided support. Losers um, on the way down, Aisha Motors after disappointing March auto sales numbers. Um, Titan Nestle, so the FMCG index was subdued today. Uh, and you also had softness coming in and Bharti Airtel. Oh, well, and let's move on to the broader market. Extremely green looking screen today, and so widespread. Obviously, PSUs are leading that charge, and that's showing up in both metal stocks as well as banks. So, NMDC Steel, 11 12% higher, Hindustan Copper, 12% higher. Uh, look at something like a IOB uh, up and about. So lots of names. Uh, I also want to call out sugar here because some of the sugar stocks like Bajaj, Hindustan, Sri Renuka, they've had a very good session. Six, seven, eight percent depending on which stock you're looking at. Trident is up seven and a half percent. You've got uh, Indus Towers which has had an eight percent sort of a move rally today. Lemon Tree Hotels five and a half percent. Mannapuram, yes, banks. Basically it's a very diverse screen. The mid cap market is thriving and it's, it's very clearly saying that it's sort of back from the brink after that recent sell-off. Oh, absolutely, and I think the correction is uh, forgotten. Three, three and a half odd percent, and uh, we basically are at new, we're talking about new highs. Uh, oh, the only index left uh, to do that, of course, is the bank Nifty, which never went back to a new high. Uh, the Nifty, of course, made a new high, then had a correction, and then it's basically back above it. Uh, so that's essentially the first day of new financial year F525. It's a wrap on this edition of Closing Bell from all of us here. Goodbye, thanks for watching. Markets Forward will pick up on all the action uh, with me and Reema on the other side.